<laughs> yeah. There we go. That might, that might be the intro. That might That's be. a good intro. Uh, the whistling of, of the beginning of my heart will go on, including a crack, including the crack on the high note. Oh, beautiful. Honestly, I don't think the mic picked it all up. It was like a little bit of it. We'll came see in what and the out. mic. Yeah. See what you hear when you when you look at the file. Yeah, just like, you'll just you'll just include the part where we're talking about it. The yeah. last couple, the no, last no, couple, no. the last couple notes, and then just uh, the talk. Uh, 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 and then, wow, that was really good. Okay, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Saving People Queering Things, the supernatural podcast where we support Celine Dion, even if the angels seemingly don't. Today we are pulling up to season six, episode 17, My Heart Will Go On. I'm your host, Noah, pronouns he, him. I'm August, pronouns they, them. And my name is Ian, pronouns he, him. Uh, Despite only being on one episode, I am referred to as a fan favorite. (laughs) Yes! Your episode was really good. It was was fantastic. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's been been four and a half. No, almost exactly four seasons. Exactly four seasons, actually, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right after that. Yeah, if you haven't listened to it, um, Hollywood Babylon. It was really... Also, fun fact, the first episode that Noah edited for this podcast. Before I came on as an official full co-host of the the show. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great. It was a good time. So I've heard Ian's voice more than I've seen his face. So do it like what you will. It'll be one to one by the end of this. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah. Good. Ian, uh, Ian is um, one of my friends that is local. So it's fun. I get to record in person. I don't get to do that very often. Woo-hoo. I'm waiting for the day that all of the main co-hosts get to get together and record in person, all of us. That we'll would have be to make that one a video episode. I think. Chaotic as hell, I swear. I think that would be the one. I think that would be a time to be like, we're going to put out a video episode. Mm, yeah. No, that, video option. A completely unedited, we just got to do it in one take. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Anyway, the question I have for my co-host today is, would you be okay with sacrificing more or less 50,000 people who were never really born in order to keep two of your family members alive? If you wait, if you you found out we were in this situation. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Are you asking me or asking August? Both. Both of us. Oh, geez. Uh, (laughs) I, mm. It's a really tough episode because, a tough question because like no answer makes you seem like a good person. Nope. (laughs) You either hate your family or you don't care about 50,000 potential people. So it's like a lose-lose scenario. Lean towards the like potential, like if you're exactly in the context of this episode, I think you sacrificed 50,000 people mostly because you know it's all going to shit anyway yeah if it's not the threat of like fate intervening it's a harder question yeah I mean it's kind of like the trolley problem (laughs) exactly the trolley problem except the 50,000 people instead of getting hit by a trolley just cease to exist yeah Yeah. which is violent yeah it is less violent and there is also the weird like butterfly effecty things that they don't have a lot of I think that they directly reference in this episode yeah but also just the the individuals in people's lives who have or have not died we only we only really got two absolutely confirmed people who didn't die but there was also no reference to any you know here's a character who's still alive in the main canon but yeah. is just what like no references to that which yeah. is tricky when you have an alternate timeline for one episode and yeah. like mm-hmm. half an episode of that it is it is an interesting idea that they flesh out in a couple of really good visual gags and <laughs> don't have a lot else to do with yeah it, the shortness of this alternate universe limits their what they're actually able to do but like that's supernatural for you but they like to be yeah. like let's give you an alternate universe but for like one episode this is like the fifth time they've done that already this show yeah because we had it's a wonderful life we had the changing channels which does yeah. that count okay yeah. and then uh we had we also had, um, I mean, even Mystery Spot yeah. kind of plays yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, this, this is a question because I want to be sensitive to Noah's um, not watching the show. <laughs> have they gone to Vancouver yet? Yes, we just okay. did that episode. Yeah. 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 Like, never that. remember where that is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah French, mistake, French Mistake was two weeks ago, okay. so... It's fresh in it's fresh in our mind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that may be the most famous AU. It's funny because I think I forget about this episode's AU because it's overshadowed by French mistake yeah. being right before. And so because close. only one 
and it's textually ends up you know ends up being like kind of in the in a dream sequence yeah which is mm, we'll talk about that <laughs> yeah. that's a choice but <laughs> if we had to boil it down two family members that you care a lot about you're gonna make 50, it 000, that yes or no uh I, i'll go fifty thousand. i'll i'll make them not i'm not unaliving them i am preventing them I, from ever being alive i think i like lean that way as well i think like you would pick the family members to to survive yeah okay yeah okay, fair enough fair enough i don't feel good about it no like where i would choose what about you Noah? I, I honestly think i would pick the family members to survive too <laughs> you can't blame me for that so 50, if you're people i don't know yeah if you're a family listening to this um uh shout that's out we I- love you <laughs> uh, Fifty thousand people's lives worth so you know it works <laughs> Now that you've met your hosts for today, it is time to catch you up. If you haven't watched Supernatural recently, here's what you've missed on the road so far. First up, August is going to recap the show up to this point. Are you ready? All right. Yeah. I've done a show recap in a while, so I'm I'm not prepared. I'm not preparing. You got this. Three, two, one. Okay, so there are two brothers. They hunt monsters, and recently they stopped an apocalypse along with their very good buddy slash gay lover Castiel. Um, <laughs> now they have are post-apocalypse but there is a angelic civil war. Um, Cass is flitting in and out doing something. Uh, they got thrown into Canada? Question mark? Alternate universe? And they're trying to figure out how to stop all these alpha monsters that keep showing up. And maybe Eve also? Mother of all? Ooh, damn! You nailed that. You nailed Felt it. good about that one. 10 out of 10. Could not complain people. even a little I bit. I was like, I'm just gonna slide past seasons one through five really quickly because my problem with these recaps is sometimes I get stuck explaining the context of Sam and Dean Mm -hmm. and then I have used 25 seconds. Yeah. But if somebody's listening to season six of our show and they don't know who Sam and Dean are at this point, that's on them. Very true. Very true. Next up, we've got Ian here to recap this episode. Are you ready, Ian? One second to pull up some notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there we are. Perfect. Okay. We love it. All right. 30 seconds on the clock. All right. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Celine Marie Claudette Dion, born March 30th, 1968, is a Canadian <laughs> Are referred to as the queen of power ballads. She is noted for her powerful and technically skilled vocals. Her music is incorporated genres such as pop, rock, R&B, gospel, and classical music. Her recordings have, main, are, have been mainly made in English and French, although she has also sung in Spanish, Italian, German, Latin, Japanese, and Chinese. Born into a wow. large family, Charlemagne, Quebec, Dion discovered her future manager and husband, Renee Angel, and emerged as a teen star in her home country. Ooh, okay, okay. Fantastic information. I learned, I learned something. Yeah. I did not know she had that many languages. She That's recorded in so many languages. Impressive. My yep. God. And in this episode, she's just a loud singer. They just dunk on her super hard. So hard. Yep. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she's also Canadian, too? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't Canadian. think I knew that. Did you not know that? Oh, I she's a, she's a, like, she's considered one of our, like, yeah. notable. Okay. She, she is so notable. There's a comedy band that has a song about how they're in love with her. Okay. Yeah. Send me that link once we're over, because. Yeah. For, for those of you who move. don't know, it is the Arrogant Worms, and the song is just called Celine Dion. And if you okay. haven't heard <laughs> Arrogant Worms, you're probably not Canadian. Um, But the Arrogant <laughs> Worms just do weird songs as evidenced by the fact that they have a song about Celine Dion. Yeah. yeah. Get it of them because there's always three uh between them the wolves of glendale and axis of awesome there always seem to be three and none of them play the actual drums uh and then yeah very silly very silly comedy music and they're very good and very canadian yeah okay like just canadian references pretending so like the canadian lonely island less production value okay, yeah fair, fair. so yes yeah. the canadian lonely island yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. of very, very acoustic driven songs um, yeah. we were speaking about hockey before this uh, and one of the arrogant worms does uh, song commissions and one of the ones he's released to the public uh, is called Finland Finland Greatest Hockey Power that he <laughs> so funny for a guy in Finland because in the Olympics uh, in the men's hockey Olympics Finland is the highest rated average team but has very few gold medals because they always get silver or bronze every year it's it's silver or bronze for them every year and so they have the greatest average statistic for hockey but it's a very funny song it's a very so funny song 
to win. It's uh, they, the arrogant worms are like it, they're so they're very lyrically focused. Yeah, like they're just very lyrically silly and full of a lot of like Canadian references and like ultra niche references. They are extremely funny. If you enjoy the Lonely Island, you will probably enjoy the arrogant worms. Okay, um, maybe we'll put some favorites in the uh, description of the podcast this week. Yeah. Okay. Play- nice, beautiful. Speaking of music recommendations, now it is time for us to pick some music to accompany us on our journey. Here's what we have for our episode mixtape this week. August, did you want to go first? Yeah, so the song I have is Life's What You Make It by Talk Talk. And I chose this song because it's all about, you know, life's what you make it. Choose your own destiny. Choose your own adventure, which is sort of the point of this episode, even if it goes <laughs> south. Um, and this is just a classic song. Like the vibes and the boppiness of it are just kind of work with this episode. Um, Hell yeah. And I enjoyed doing a re-listen of it. Hadn't heard it in a while. Yeah. So yeah, life's what you make it by uh, Talk Talk. Beautiful. Ian, what about you? I'm, I'm going to go for the obvious answer and <laughs> go with My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Had to Beautiful. be there. I'm so proud of you i didn't any, have the courage to do it on mine any version of it whether it's the recorder version whether it's there's it's a <laughs> it's popular the recorder version the recorder especially version especially the recorder version it's something very special um but it's also a popular enough song that i'm pretty sure you could find a cover of it in any genre you seek yeah yeah like in 30 seconds i could probably find a chip tune version of it with an accompanying <laughs> like fake video game of the titanic what if you just sing it for us in the chip tunes no, I can't, I can't digitize my own voice on command, unfortunately. <laughs> No, I'm no, not going to do it. Oh, <laughs> not about it. Try. <laughs> my pick this week was Hole in the Bottom of My Brain by AJR because that song is all about chasing a feeling that you can never really achieve no matter how much you push stuff into the cracks because Bobby and Dean and Sam would never truly feel okay about sacrificing that many people for this world if, I mean, if they felt responsible the whole time, you know? Like if they sacrificed yes, 50,000 people for just Ellen and Joe, they would hate themselves for the rest of time and sort of their hole in the bottom of their brain. I mean, sort of the reason they don't save Ellen and Joe in the first place Mm -hmm. in the real timeline is because they're only shot at like stopping the apocalypse and many billions of people dying is to like not save Ellen and Joe, like not prioritize their lives. So like kind of full circle-y in a terrible way. A terrible, heart-wrenching, destructive way. Yes, absolutely. Damn. Some fantastic mixtape picks this week. Yeah. Agreed. But now that we've got our mixtape playing, it's time for this week's hunt. Today, we are pulling up to season six, episode 17, My Heart Will Go On, through the theme of confusion, which was quite the fitting theme this week because these brothers sat down in a Mustang and I said... Confused were you, Noah, watching this first, like, (laughs) 10 minutes of the episode? Did I miss something, (laughs) Us? I swear I was paying attention. What the fuck is this? How much did it throw you? When did you figure out? As soon as Ellen walked on screen, I said, ah, fuck. Okay. (laughs) Okay. This is just going to be a really painful alternate universe, alternate timeline story. And I hate it. I hate it. (laughs) I saw the stripes and I was like, what? And then I saw the Mustang logo and I was like, what? It was bad. How how petty does Balthazar have to be to go and unmake the entire Impala line? Like, what? I mean, this is Balthazar we're talking about. So far, very petty seems to be his primary personality trait. That's that's fair. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's petty, but it's also, I, I always like weird alternate history. Oh, yeah. This comes in later in the episode and they never mention it, but the the travel agent character having a giant go visit Detroit vo- voted America's number one city. In the- <laughs> I didn't notice that. Yeah, it's it's like her office is sort of the spot where I'm guessing partially because of budgetary restrictions and, and different things is the spot they decide to drop all of the like, go visit Cuba. It's going to be super fun. Visit the Trump Tower that's there. Oh, um, fuck. Yeah. They're like all of the hiding all of the Easter eggs about like, these are all of the like ripple effect changes globally because we can't show you them okay other than the brothers driving a different car yeah i mean it it, 
being Detroit is fascinating when we think about like Swan Song and all of that <sighs> happy in Detroit. Like it's Gotta fascinating. Go meet Detroit. The devil in Detroit. Yeah. Same choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a mm. fun. These are like the episodes where I like wish they played out the AU a little bit longer. Yeah. And I get why it's a one episode thing, but. But still, please give us some more. Give us Joe at least. Please. I, I know you showed us I mean, Ellen for a like, decent amount of the I episode. Think, I think I was, pr- I'm guessing it was probably an availability issue. It, that's fair. Uh, I get it. But ah, put her in a picture at least. That picture with Ellen and Bobby outside of the repair shop. Put Joe in that picture, please. Uh, that was a little frustrating. And I get it. This is the CW. They don't have the budget to bring back both Ellen and Joe. But damn. <laughs> at least we got her on the phone. And that was that was okay. Yeah. What are like general thoughts from both of you? As, as far as just timeline or as far as just the episode? Anything. Oh, episode? Perfect. I love Final Destination. And yes. This is television Final Destination, which means Thank it's you. To the first Final Destination in mm-hmm. that you know, minor Rube Goldberg machines. Because the, the first... <laughs> If anyone, for whatever reason, hasn't seen Final Destination, uh, all of them but the fourth one are... The fourth one? All of them but the one are incredible. The three, is the fourth one the one with the bridge? Because I like the bridge. No, that's, that's the Final Destination. That's oh, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, that's the one that takes place in Vancouver. Or is filmed- <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> fair. Which that's is, hilarious. Is the disaster. The fourth <laughs> one is the one with the uh, the race car track. Oh, okay, yeah, that one's kind of it for sure. Yeah, and and basically for for people who have, for whatever reason not seen Final Destination, uh, the basic premise is kind of sucks in the <laughs> sense of a bunch of people who were supposed to die don't die because someone has a premonition about a big disaster that happens. Right, and then yep. death comes for each of them by as the franchise goes on, setting up increasingly more elaborate ways to kill them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, accidental ways to do it, quote unquote. Right. Ways, ways that no one could ever think was premeditated, but is yep. 100% premeditated. Yeah. But yep. like by manipulating the universe a little yep. bit. Mm-hmm. And so, and this episode, again, by, by the sense of it being a TV budget and therefore smaller, is really, really similar to the first Final Destination in the sense of it's, you know, they they trip on a thing and then a thing hits the mousetrap and then they, they get decapitated by a garage door. Which I Wild! Don't, yeah. Which is a very like the the elaborateness of that scene of like all the little pieces that go into that scene um, honestly my first note was okay we're getting some final destination shit up in here i don't <laughs> get it <laughs> I love that that's where you went immediately, like... Immediately. Oh, it was good. I mean, I feel like that has to be what they were channeling. Because the first Final Destination came out before this episode. Yeah. Oh, they're absolutely sure. channeling that energy. I would I would be unsurprised to find out because Final... I believe the last three Final Destination movies were all filmed in Vancouver to some extent. Yeah. And I know that at least the third one had come out at that point. Okay. I believe. Because it came out in like 2008. Yeah. So then... Someone 2011 I think there was a little bit of a crossover when it comes to some amount of the some amount of the support staff between this episode of the show and uh and Final Destination that yeah. would make sense a C budget movie franchise and then a top budget CW franchise would have a lot of crossover I feel like yeah. At kind of the height of it's like Supernatural was like had been renewed, like was in a good position mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in the bankrupt CW. <laughs> <laughs> Their shoestring budget was like two shoestrings at this point. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, but sorry, to bring it back to the beginning of the episode, Bobby, when he's, you know, struggling about losing Rufus, which everybody's been there when they've lost somebody that they truly care about, <laughs> a boyfriend, and... We had a whole conversation in the last episode yeah. about this. Oh, yeah. They were, oh, yeah. we're, they being, were partners, for sure, for sure, for sure, for uh, sure. Stands okay. here. Okay. We know it, we know it. Yep. And Bo- Sam and Dean are trying their best to figure out, hey, hey you, you, you say something. No, no, no. No, you say something. And I'm pretty confident it's been a running theme throughout the show so far that Dean always loses the rock, paper, scissors challenge, right? You are correct. You are correct. You have picked up on a correct theme. Okay, but then this episode, he went and he does quite the smirk where he's like, <laughs> I've been playing you for the past six seasons. Oh, yeah. And Dean, now I'm going to win. Dean always throws scissors. Um, And like, there's a comment. I'm not sure if it's already happened. There's a point, And I think it's, I think it's no, already happened. He's it's definitely already happened. 
doesn't because okay, Sam remember. says like you yeah. you always throw He's scissors. Always with the scissors. I think mm-hmm. it might be in it's in one of these like jokey episodes. It might have been yeah. in Tales or Ghostface yeah. or something like that. That sounds right. But Dean still throws scissors and Sam throws paper and then like looks at Dean's answer and then looks back at his and is like, wait, I meant <laughs> to throw rock. What the fuck? And Dean does such a smirk, like, <laughs> I'm the shit. Let's do it. You gotta go. That was that felt like a big moment to me. And that was just in the first like 25 seconds of the episode. Yeah, uh, further into this exchange, I do really enjoy the the like, who are you guys, my wife? Yes. Reference. Sounds like a, it just sounds like a joke and then it's oh no he's actually he's married in this yep. timeline yeah mm-hmm. they do a lot of like if you once you know what's mm-hmm. happening go back and be like oh there were all these little clues in like the way bobby is acting and all of that but until that point you don't know it until you until ellen shows up and you go oh like did not pick up on that that's fair i mean i don't think you're you're meant to not you're meant to just sort of think mm-hmm. this picks up right where the last episode left off which it does but like also doesn't yeah, yeah. this this is an episode that you watch twice if you can ideally uh the first time you watch it to just sort of enjoy it and see what's going on and the second time you watch it to pick up all the references that they've uh that they dropped in and all the weird little timeline bits and and all that it's a it's Mm -hmm. a for an episode where i'm going to be completely frank here uh sam and dean don't really do a lot like there's not there's not there's no it just cut like they're little chess pieces they move around things happen around them and like it it just is fun set pieces and then it ends yeah Yeah. okay great yeah they witness a lot but they don't driving yeah this episode is very much like driving the like big narrative along and kind of trying to like tell us something about like what's happening with like balthazar and Cass and like the bigger plot but sam and dean don't have a lot of agency to actually and they spend a lot of the episode being pretty confused like to go back to the theme about like what is actually happening like they kind of seem to have this sort of sense that things are wrong even before it's revealed that like oh shit like everything we know isn't accurate We're missing a huge world event that has affected everything in our lives. Everything. And they don't even realize it. Yeah. That whole exchange they have about the Titanic is pretty funny. (laughs) It really is. Heard about this boat. And it's this this boat? Just a random, it it was a transatlantic sailing. And I, I, it's, I mean, especially with how between the, the historical event and then also the movie, which in and of itself is kind of a historical event. (laughs) Both of them, yeah. James Cameron, RIP in this universe. Uh, He's probably, I mean, he probably, probably still made Terminator. So. Yeah, but then probably died shortly thereafter. Yeah, I don't know. Or I had mean, no inspiration and was like, well, I guess I'll just be a farmer. I'll be a farmer. We let, yeah, this is the real loss is we lose not only Celine Dion, we also lose James Cameron. Not and we lose Avatar. No, no we still have Ashton Kutcher, but yeah. like, <laughs> not, oh boy. I've actually never seen Avatar. The blue people one or the not blue people one? Well, okay. I haven't I've seen, seen the blue the, people I haven't seen the blue people one. I have seen the TV show of The Last Airbender, but I would not watch the movie of The Last Airbender because Correct. I, I respect myself enough. Correct. Having just spoken about loving the movie Cats. So it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I respect myself enough partially. Like the blue people avatar, I'm I mostly I've seen I don't I I've seen bits of it, but I've definitely yeah, seen same. more between parodies mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. joking on their use of papyrus and the name of unobtainium. Mm-hmm. The SNL like, skits. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Avatar is like you don't have to have seen it to like have felt its sort of cultural impact. It's Pocahontas, but with blue people instead right. of Native Americans. And yeah. and only slightly less problematic as a result. Yeah. <laughs> slightly, yes. I I worked it. I worked both of them. If that if that works, I, when I worked at a movie theater, so I've seen bits and pieces here and there. <laughs> did you ever have anyone come in blue for those movies? Oh, honestly, I don't think I did. I think you would remember if you had. I think I would. Pointing, I, actually, I want to say coworkers said I had somebody come in and cosplay for The Way of Water, but I I didn't see them. Oh, yeah. that's, so that I guess count. you're not. In the, yes, you weren't in the like Prime place. time showings. Oh yeah. 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 So. I have a history of working at a movie theater. Okay. Nice movie theater. It was the, it was the movie theater <laughs> yeah. near the university. Um, the cheap one. The cheap Woo! one. 
be like the well, longest... you go underground and it's a little yeah. sketchy. It's not there the anymore. ones I would go to. Yeah. So the lo- uh, I mean the for for reference, the longest standing movie. I worked there for five years. Uh, wow. and the longest ten years any movie had were Mamma Mia and the <laughs> okay. Best Exotic Miracle Hotel, okay. which is a telling of what our demographic was. Yeah. <laughs> And so I never really saw anyone in costume uh, yeah. outside of the Twilight movies. Wow. The entire Twilight. <laughs> Twilight wow. Like it was all... the whole time. Yeah. Okay. Like, what a know. shot to take. Oh, nine like, to tw- all the movies over this five year period. It was just yeah. the Twilight movies that people dressed up for. Yeah. And it was a lot of moms wearing t shirts that looking back now make me mildly uncomfortable. But yeah. it's like, I'm Team Edward. I'm Team Jacob. You're 40, Karen. Yeah. You're, you're 40. <laughs> and these characters are 24 at most. Edward Edward is 100 and whatever. But okay, Jacob- you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. And it's just real weird, no yeah, matter which way you slice it. Yeah. yeah. No. Oh, that's fine. Oh, I, I, speaking of like references in this episode, I feel like I, I pulled up the wiki because I wanted to not miss any references. Let me make sure we talk about all of the references um, that happen. I mean, we get the iconic, like we get one way or another plays uh, into music, which was just like, you know, Supernatural like doesn't license a lot of like big stuff, but like when they do, they go they do, hard and like doing my heart will go on in one way or another in this episode hit correctly. Top notch. And I, comedy to what could otherwise be a kind of like like they take a suspenseful scene Which, and make it okay can we talk about that little montage there because that scene was so good every face that jared and jensen made during that scene was so good the sort of cringy like oh my god oh my god oh my god okay we're gonna walk through this situation of like real big intense moments that could end up in us dying people throwing axes back and forth and then they set the axes on fire and they both walk through it with such a face that was so good we got to see dean's hellhound trauma come back up whenever the dogs were barking at him we loved that oh good catch there on that yep. I, I... it's been a while since we've seen that but he but... was freaking out a lot more than sam was they've been remarkably consistent about that when it comes to like any appearance of dogs which since... i, I want to say is is jensen's responsibility not the writers you know like he brought that out and the writers were like oh yeah that works we did that <laughs> totally but yeah yep. once once they walked through the fire the faces that they each made with jensen walking through it so fast with such a cringy look on his face and then jared taking a pause and then trying to go and then stopping and then going forward again it was just top notch like they know well they feel like they know they're supposed to like get god mm-hmm. and and that knowledge it's like when you're like walking into something and you i don't know when you the moment you're about to like do something you know will hurt but you have to do it when you and that walk moment into of, a like, room where your ex <laughs> is sitting there and you know you have to interact with them and to grab something that you left behind or you know you have to like rip a band-aid off like like or you know pull a particularly bad sliver out or a piece of glass out of your hand like that moment of being like uh, uh, maybe if i hesitate like just do it just do it just get it just get it just, done just get it done just walk in front of that flaming yeah. knife and then a flaming hatchet flies right in front of front of your face and you're like wow maybe i should take a step back and then you're like oh no 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 do it uh, mm. it was a great montage love a good montage oh, there's a good montage one thing we do need to point out in terms of like the meta of this episode and just general hilarity um and again this is coming from the one of the supernatural wikis jensen actually did an ad for titanic related merchandise did which you really I'm not making that up not making that up i am gonna pull up the image so noah can see it and i will link it <laughs> um it was oh a my Netflix. god <laughs> him it's his days of our lives like era so he's very blonde and 90s and uh staring at the camera and he's holding this necklace and it's a necklace inspired by the movie and he's got a jacket on which is a denim a denim a, a, a jacket very big denim jacket yeah and mm-hmm. it's we will link to the, a picture of this this ad because it's extremely funny um it's really nice it looks good yeah um yeah so that's jensen's <laughs> personal connection with the movie titanic and right below it, it says Nicholas makes a huge splash with movie fans. And 
we've been known that Jensen makes big splashes with his fans wherever he goes around. So <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, this episode was also aired on the 99th anniversary of the date the Titanic sank, which oh, is fun. That's pretty. Fun. That's pretty cool. Like they, the chances of them kind of timing that out and going, like I'm, I'm curious as to whether or not they were like had written this episode and then they got lucky, or if they mm-hmm. were like, we need a major historical event to have like not happened and then they went wait this episode would get released on this day what if it was the titanic like you know like you could have chosen something else but they chose the titanic okay but like what else could they have chosen in american history to make it that big of a you know reveal fifty thousand people in the balance i mean trying to think of like other large scale i mean like i mean it could have been something like a battle going a different way or like stopping world war one kind Mm. of thing right or just yeah or just a singular like event within a a global conflict okay they could have been like what's Cut out Pearl Harbor. Right. Like that would have also been something that would have like you like changed things. I, I think them choosing the Titanic is more iconic. And also, yeah, it would oh, give yeah. them the like silly Balthazar stuff, which you couldn't really do with something like yeah. Pearl Harbor. Once or at least like really... not tastefully. <laughs> I mean, nobody's based songs on Pearl Harbor, right? Like surely. <laughs> But having using the Titanic as their pendulum swing gives them so much room for Balthazar to be just a silly, funny guy who wants to kill off the Celine Dion song and happens to save a lot of lives along the way. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot more sense for the narrative. But I don't know what else it could have been. Yeah. So it's just kind of fun that it ended up being airing on the day on that 99th anniversary. Some good um, coincidence. Fun fact. Uh, one of my parents was really obsessed with Titanic. Uh, like with not not the not the movie just like the historical event of the Titanic and so like growing up I have seen so many Titanic documentaries I it's most of the information is not in my brain anymore but I used okay. to know it, like a certain amount of Titanic information okay so I like remember the 100th anniversary because it was a big deal in my house and I was a teenager at the time because it was like 11 12 years ago yeah anyway that's just kind of a fun fact we went to like the one of those big Titanic exhibits I think it was maybe the year of the 100th that was like came to the museum near and you got to like get a little card that said like it was like a little ticket with like name <sighs> and stuff in it, and you would go through the whole exhibit and you would like look at it, a bunch of like artifacts and like read a bunch of stuff and then you get to the end and there was like a wall and you would like look for the name on your ticket and find out if the person that you had had survived that, <laughs> and, and then the was, room you were in got flooded and you had to figure right? out how to escape like, it real immersive anyway um, <laughs> a really vivid memory of that because I went to that exhibit in like high school <laughs> Damn. In retrospect, was like, I mean, I found it, I thought it was really fascinating. Um, but uh, yeah. a little macabre as a like activity. Damn. Um, That's pretty dope. Yeah, it's one of the more okay. memorable museum experiences of my life. Yeah, I mean, I mean, at a certain point as well, trying to figure out there's probably a good number of people that like looked up their person and found out they were either alive or dead, and it was like, all right, what else can I learn about this person? Yeah, and, it's also, <laughs> yeah, and also, yeah, it definitely also got you interested in like that. stakes. The, like yeah, exactly. the real human people who either yeah, died exactly. or survived. Yeah, well, and the one for the ones that survived, you'd be like, oh, okay, like what happened to this person? And like, you know, are they still alive? Uh, or like, what are they doing now? And like, what do they do in the rest of their life? Like being one of the people that survived. And it's kind of cool. Damn, I like that. Yeah. Um, there's also, there's a reference to the Waltons, which I thought was very funny, Um, which if you don't know, is like a 70s TV show about this like family oh, in the yeah. Great Depression and World War II. Too. Also, one of the things I was allowed to watch as a homeschooled, very sheltered child. Um, so I'm nice. very familiar with that show and some being making a reference. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Um, we also had a reference to The Godfather, which is a movie series that my mother watches every year, I think. She watches through one, <laughs> three, that. three, and they say, what? No, severed horse head? Ha <laughs> ha. Because clearly you would need to have a severed horse head involved if you were involved in any sort of gang slash mafia related activity <laughs> obviously mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. you don't uh dean makes a lot it's it's notable again that as usual dean is the one making most of these references yeah yeah mm-hmm. uh there's also yeah like a, a um batman reference there's a reference to the riddler Ooh, riddle me 
only this. Yeah, it's always good. Can't go wrong with that. I also, it felt like, I know that the subject matter I'm referring to came out well after this episode, but the fact that time freezes and then Atropos slash fate comes in and does the thing that is required to make the person die, that felt like a big Dungeons and Daddies reference to me personally, because I was like, (laughs) oh, here we go, Mambo number five. Spoiler alert, sorry. If you haven't seen season two, (laughs) go listen to season two. What are you doing? Anyway. I think you're too deep in the the Dungeons and Daddies uh, world. You know what? I'm aware of that. (laughs) Ian, have you listened to Dungeons and Daddies? I have not. I started it. Yeah, I should. I I know I should. I listen to a lot of D&D podcasts and a lot of them. There's there's always that getting used to it period. Every step. Have you listened to our Dungeons and, da- and no. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons? I didn't know podcast? you were doing one until I saw the notes for this episode. Yeah. Well, okay. You know what? Well, that's fair. Yeah. Before anyway, the next time you come on, you've got to <laughs> listen. And this applies to any listeners out there who haven't tried our <laughs> Queering People Saving Throws yeah. show. Go we're check having it fun. Out. It's a great it's a time. silly time. It's a great. It's a silly time. Noah's really... uh, our dungeon master and um, is doing a phenomenal job. It's a like super. We started it during the strike when we were not able to. Uh, we we were not releasing supernatural episodes. We started talk doing. We we're like, what can we do? And we we're like, we could do a D and D podcast, and it's in a supernatural s world. That's okay. not so. There are like the monsters and yeah. things like that. Um, but it's not the supernatural world. There's some significant differences. Yes, there really, really are. Uh, Noah's really crafted it in a fun way. Yeah, that sounds sweet. That yeah, is, that sounds yeah. It's, a, I, I will, it's a good time. We'll August is giving me too much credit. It, the most of the credit goes to the players by. Sh- shaping the world by the way that I react to them reacting to my world and it's great it's a fun time all around go check oh. it out on the same feed every other Friday more or less <laughs> more or less no, that I joke. missed a week don't worry about it all good you, it's, you were DMing and editing that show so like yeah. okay sorry as long as we're talking about references the lady who gets her hair caught in the printer she is trying her best to make sure that she's taking care of this office. She's a great receptionist as long as we know her for. That woman, that exact same woman, I was looking at her and I was like, I swear I know her from somewhere. (laughs) And you want to know what the truth is? She doesn't even go here. <laughs> He's that lady from Mean Girls. Oh my God. Where really? Uh huh. Uh-huh. If you look it up, wow. she's the crying girl from Mean Girls. Wow. She does not even go to this show. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. Good. Oh, that's a really good cat. That yeah. Yeah, good eye. I have in all my time seeing this episode, never once picked that up. <laughs> Doesn't go here. <laughs> oh, it killed oh. me. And I was so happy about it. <laughs> so we it. know we know, at least we know know what she did after Mean Girls. Mm. Yeah. She moved on to a fantastic next, you know, gig <laughs> where she died four minutes into her four forty-five seconds into her <laughs> appearance. Nope. Yeah. Well, Victim number two. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if we even got her name. We definitely did. Did we? we? Uh, I do not remember if we did or not. Let's see. Let's see. Let's find out. I think it's Annie something. Okay. Annie Um, Whitaker. Annie Whitaker. I'm just going to say you are correct. Yeah, you know what? We're going to say, yep, correct. I can't find it. Scroll down just a little bit to the characters. Nope. You just have a wiki page, No, I don't know what you're talking about. You're so right. Let me check. Her, the IMDb page again. Okay. <laughs> see if they see if they name her. They anyway, definitely did. Oh, really? That important? Um, it's we not. do get the line: "Accidents don't just happen accidentally." <laughs> also, an iconically yeah. quoted oh. supernatural phrase. The faces that they both do at that moment. What? Uh, uh, sh- sh- shut the fuck up! I that you know phrase, what I meant. That phrase got quoted a lot in supernatural fandom. Whenever the writers would do something particularly insane, um, but like we were like, "Is it an accident or?" Is it on purpose? People would just, that would be the quote they would put. It would be like, accidents don't just happen accidentally. It is, it is very allow myself to introduce myself. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is, yeah. Oh, we are, we are right in the, so part of the, my, my watching Supernatural and my history and, and, and you no, know, you get to look forward to this in the future. Um, When, I mean, like I said, I left it like season, midway through season eight, I want to say eight. Yeah. Okay. Eight. 
I think we figured out that it was eight Midway. because I talked to you about season nine plot points and you did not remember them. Yeah, I was like, yeah, after sure, whatever. Spoilers. Uh, season eight, no, no real spoilers, but it's just like it. It starts to hit the situation where the writers. I mean, you've already seen it this season where the writers uh d- decide to do things because they could rather than. <laughs> they're like, what if we got this actor that people want? This like one TV character for one episode for this dumb bit, and then yeah. it happens. It, you're you are. Yeah, you... And the, the jumping the shark sort of just keeps happening, like, more and more. Which, they used that title as an episode in season four. And here we yeah. are two seasons later, and they're jumping the jump the of shark the shark. The shark just gets bigger and bigger. It's yeah. just a mm-hmm. bigger and bigger shark. They just keep turning around and jumping a slightly larger shark. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> it's a significantly larger shark, and there are, we still love it. There are entire seasons that are all, like, that are like, what if we jumped this shark? What if we actually travel? to another galaxy and jumped that jumped a shark in that whoa, galaxy. Whoa, like, whoa. Why? We why? traveled to different galaxies? <laughs> it's a metaphor. <laughs> okay, sorry. Because Jamie and I had a prediction where they would go to space. And Again, I, just I can't want confirm that or deny true. any prediction that they, you make on this show. They go to space, full stop. <laughs> okay. Ian says it. Know. Well, there I was... Don't Again. I don't know. I'm not far enough in okay, that, okay, you know, okay. if they go to space or not. <laughs> there was a lot more to the prediction. Like, they went to space they went to Jupiter and like they had a battle here and whatnot. It was great. It was a it was really elaborate. Yeah, it was we very made, elaborate. Jamie, who's our friend on Driver Picks the Podcast, uh, we made her and Noah do an episode at the end of season five with their like thoughts and predictions, having neither of them having seen past that. Cool. Uh, it's, it was a fun time. Yep. Uh, they said some wild things that we are going to come back to um, in a few years. <laughs> Which we love. We love. So one one thing that we, we definitely have to touch on in the world of shipping, mm-hmm. uh, is Lazar being extremely direct and describing Cass as being in love with Dean. The uh, most direct we've had to this point. No. He says, oh, I think you've got me confused. I'm not the one in the dirty trench coat that's in love with you. Like, wow. wow. <laughs> okay. No. So it's a good bit of good bit of just like ribbing and a good mm-hmm. bit of just, you know, he's making a joke, but also making a joke like I, I I can imagine I mean I don't I don't I can't speak for you August because I was not that person who ships you know make make the make the beautiful boys kiss that was <laughs> let's, let's hang up the call moment. now let's kick Ian off 11. I think that's enough that's fair that's fair it was that was like almost 50 that was like 13 years you're ago 13 and they're like oh, look at these look at I was older than 13 but okay. like this was 13 years ago is what <laughs> I'm saying but I'm, I'm still on board with the let's make the boys kiss please oh yeah but just like sorry what you the point you were actually making making i'm sorry what you're ahead. actually making oh the point i was actually meant was just like the fandom being because at this point they have they had the book uh yeah they would have they 100 would have had the had the the person literally writing fan fiction about them yes that has happened yep. has that, yeah yes yes oh yeah yes yes yeah, the girl yes was becky. Becky. becky we met becky yes becky, becky. yeah, yeah. and yep. having you know they have at this point it, i mean in they've the, crossed the barrier they've they've acknowledged the shipping and the fan fiction yeah. As being like a, this is kind of a weird thing for you to ship brothers. Uh, and <laughs> then now leaning into, because yeah, this was this was sort of the era of TV where where some shows, I, I'm going to reference, where Glee uh, yep. legitimately just brought up the ship names that were given to them by the internet. Yep. Which is and wild. They're absolutely starting to have conversations back with the fandom. And yeah. a lot of shows were starting to do that. And like Supernatural was definitely starting to do that. Like their whole, the ghost spacers, like the, sorry, the real Ghostbusters episode with the fan convention is like directly like yeah representing quote unquote the fandom at that point yeah so this yeah. line is like fascinating in that um and then you know is followed by immediately like the rest of this episode it being like Cass being like yeah I'm not going to allow you to hurt them yeah I, I have <laughs> between yeah complete pandemonium and my two favorite boys <laughs> I will choose them yeah. yep which like also speaking of like kind of in a connected way like there's a lot of interesting meta and I wrote down a lot of quotes about like fate in this episode yeah. about like oh I thought you couldn't change history haven't you heard there's no more rules darling mm. just a can, lot of interesting meta fate? fate talks about fate 
herself talks about like God giving her a job and a script, which is and wild. Them throwing a book. Yep, which is wild because Cass is the one that they've referenced in the recap for this episode and in previous episodes about him burning the book and throwing the pages away for every one of the angels, which I would assume would include fate at that point. If God gave them the same script that they gave the angels, Cass using his free will burns fate's book it burns everybody's book it burns balthazar's book and nobody knows what they need to do now Cass kind of forces everyone into choosing freedom yeah and atropos fucking hates that they <laughs> love the rhythm and the schedule and the stuff that they need to do and they want to follow that to the end of the world i guess it's another interesting episode in terms of that like meta narrative mm-hmm. about like who's telling this story and why and who's really in control of this story and like Cass is being really strong which like is probably the most we've heard from Cass this whole season on yeah. like his motivation of like freedom being still his motivation which is wild because yeah. previously we've seen that he is fighting in the civil war in heaven and we've seen that he still cares about the brothers even though he's sometimes a little too busy to hang out with them and he's trying to help Balthazar get these weapons but then once Balthazar gets the weapons Cass doesn't quite trust him to maintain control of them because then immediately Balthazar goes back and changes history so it's like okay was that something Cass wanted or was that something Balthazar wanted to do just because fuck it it's an interesting question interesting question question. because at the end Balthazar has the kill shot on Atropos the fate and he's he's there and Cass says Balthazar don't do it like (laughs) stop one second and Balthazar is like ooh <laughs> Awkward. Whoops. <laughs> Isn't that funny? So silly of me. <laughs> so um, I, I want to believe that Balthazar is following all of Cass's orders at this point. Right. But it's that's questionable. It's questionable, to say the least. Because mm-hmm. as soon as Cass says, go back and fix it, he does. So was it Cass's orders to do it in the first place? That really it challenges me personally. I, these are some really good questions that I... Sorry, did, I, I'm just listening to this discussion and being like, was it Cass's order to unsync that? I, I see that episode and I see this episode and I read it as, no, that was a like... Creative like, choice? Like, I no, I see that as more of a like no cat like having it be a whether it was direct orders or whether it was like a uh crap we need more souls how do we get more souls and then Balthazar mm-hmm. goes we could unsink the Titanic and then Cass is like yes do that like I read it as that wasn't Balthazar being a, a silly little guy that was Cass what event in human history would have given us the most souls here and now right yeah that's okay. like not undoing a lot of other things like that's a singular event that's not like a war or something yeah. where like a battle you're like, yeah. what's a singular event that changes? That was so, quote gives unquote, an accident. Yeah. Right. It's not, yeah. It doesn't change motivation. Like nobody meant to mm. sing Titanic. Mm. Mm. That's yeah. interesting. And yes. I think we will come back to it when we get to some future episodes. Because, oh Question. my God. I don't think we've established before this episode that the war in heaven is being fought using human souls. We've not gotten <laughs> I was that wondering confirmed if you would mention that, that is new and information for you. Wow. The, for your war machine quote, oh, okay, wait, wait. <laughs> what weapon are you using that uses <laughs> souls as fodder for that cannon? Wow. Wow. Yeah. Big reveal. Yeah. Big, big reveal that's going to have some, some repercussions. Stuff. We are like five episodes away from the end of the season. We're so close. We are steamrolling to some answers on some of the questions you've been asking all season, Noah. Okay, good. Uh, good. We can't answer them now. And I think that's probably where we I end hate this that. conversation. But <laughs> Shit. Okay, wait. We can't end the episode conversation overall without talking about my hero and icon, Ellen, coming back for this episode. Because I fucking love her! And she's yeah. so great. And I hate that we don't get to see Joe, but it's whatever. I get it. Availability, no big deal. But Ellen and Bobby being a a couple for this whole episode is so sweet Very and cute. so wholesome and they would be such a good couple in the main show overall if it was possible if okay and <clears throat> there was Ellen one died. if Ellen hadn't died I think she and Bobby would have made a phenomenal couple throughout this yeah. 
fandom feels pretty show. strongly. The fa- I think that they chose this particular like person to bring back because the fandom had long kind of looked at those two characters and been like, man, it wouldn't have been great if like oh. that. That's a very much a fan love pairing. Yeah, yeah. That I think that they pulled from to do this episode. Proud of them for that. I love it and I support it. There was a moment in this episode when Bobby told Ellen the cost of keeping her around and was like, well, it's 50,000 ish people or I keep you and Joe alive. And she looks at him and is like, damn, and, and Joe is still and Joe would still die if we did this. And that moment alone speaks to me because I, I know that she would be absolutely willing to give up her life for 50,000 people. But when her daughter is involved, she hesitates a lot more. And she's like, I mean, I still think it's the right choice, but I don't feel good saying yes go ahead do it if it was just me in a heartbeat again very reminiscent of their like death scenes as well which like, that, but, kind of flipped, but kind of flipped because in the death scene that they have joe is the one that is like get out of here I would you They'll also die i'm i'm dead already no big deal and ellen is like i'll stay with you yeah. don't worry it's i'm very, not gonna like, let you leave without me and then she very, does leave without her it's very, le- very like their me. fates are their fates are tied together yeah um and they are tragedies Hurts my heart and my soul and my body and all of the above. But it was nice to see Ellen, if only for. It was a- great. I loved seeing her back good. and happy in this reality. It was good. It was, it was good. good. It was good. With that, we should wrap this episode. That means it's time for our final and favorite section of the episode. Character to watch slash or character, character bless. blessings. Couldn't see that. I would like to um, bless those 50,000 uh, people who had l- potential lives just ruined. Because, you know, their potential lives were, you know, human lives and didn't deserve to be like someone's soul fodder for their canon. That's yep. not great. That's not not <laughs> loving. Not loving that nope so i want to bless that potential of those uh those fifty thousand. fair ian what about you uh i i i mean in particular noah as a as a new watcher uh we we have alluded to it at this point uh <laughs> i want you to watch cast and, and see what that <laughs> that's uh that's a whole i i remember a little bit yeah but it's it's like keep keep an eye on that one um there there is a there is a i, I mean it's not a it's not a true thing but there's a he's he's definitely going for from, I'm, I'm going to throw a bunch of wrestling wrestling terms here now. Okay, do it. So, baby that. face, good guy, heel, bad guy, somewhere in the middle is called a tweener. Okay, yeah. The <laughs> ass is going from baby face and starting to starting to dip his toes into tweener with this episode. Okay. okay. Just, good. That's a good metaphor. Yeah. yeah. We love to see it. Yeah. yeah. How about you? I, I mean, I can't watch this episode and not pick Bobby slash Ellen. Yeah. Because uh, I wanted naturally. to pick both of them so so badly because they're two of my favorite characters and I want to see them happy in their own rights respectively but Bobby is dealing with currently the loss of Ellen again and Rufus and he he, he really just so deserves to be happy in his own way and I hope that Ellen is happy again back up in heaven where she clearly ended up once again after this episode so Bobby yeah. slash Ellen mm. there we go it was a hard episode yeah thanks for joining us Ian oh my god Ian thank you so much for coming on again it's been so long since I've heard your voice and it was great to put a face to the name lovely and hopefully by the end of this you will have I mean you will have heard my voice more than seen my face after you're done editing this (laughs) but that that ratio is now a little closer yeah it's a little bit closer for sure well we'll have you again for like a season seven season eight kind of thing and yeah. and we'll have to have you once we get to the point where it's an episode you also haven't oh, seen boy. Yes. That, like- that would be extra fun because then we'll both be on the same page at that point and i'll just be mm. i i will probably just not i will be the blindest of a I, yeah I, you I want to be in between stuff yeah i'll just watch whatever episode <laughs> you give me and just <laughs> sure right. why not what's happening i got some ones in mind i think you'll like i think you'll like that'll be so good i cannot okay. wait 
Thank you so much. If you are listening, you can subscribe to this show, Saving People, Queering Things, wherever you listen to podcasts, and maybe give us a little rating or review on your platform of choice. We would uh, absolutely be so grateful if you did that. Um, Share the show with your friends, all that fun stuff. Um, If you want to get involved with our show or with our show community, you can join our Discord server. You can find links to all of our social media, and you can look at the full season mixtapes and that is all going to be at our website, QueeringThingsPodcast.com. Also out now, Queering People Sipping Throws, our main crew, along with AJ of Supernatural Opinions, taking a dive into a queer d d adventure, releasing every other Friday right here on our <laughs> feed. <laughs> uh, incredible. Yes, check that out. Um, also, be sure to ride along with us next week as we welcome back Jamie and Beth from Driver Picks the Podcast. And we're going to be exploring season six, episode 18, Frontierland, through the theme of vices. Take us out, Ian. Thank you all for coming along for the ride, and we wish you a peaceful road until we meet again. 